I was originally interested in computer science and then I saw this combination with computer science and philosophy and I read the first line of the course description which started with artificial intelligence and I was like, yes, that's the course. <laughs> I essentially came to the university for an open day and it was being talked about and I'd never heard of philosophy before. So in fact, I dismissed it fairly quickly. But it turned out then that I went away and I read a short book on philosophy, a kind of popular science type book. And I thought, well, actually, these questions that are being asked to get me to think about are actually rather quite interesting. If you think that computer science might be something that would appeal to you, first of all, forget about school IT. It's nothing like what you do under the heading of IT or ICT at school. Uh, it's more like mathematics, actually, except that it has this creative aspect. Computer science and philosophy actually have very close links. I mean, Alan Turing, for example, who we think of as, in many ways, the father of computer science, I mean, he was writing right from the start about philosophically related issues. There's some obvious crossovers. For instance, logic is a key component in both. But in the first year, I would say, 80 or maybe even 85% of the course would not look out of place in a single honours computer science degree. In the second year we get to choose some computer science and some philosophy options but it will still be 50-50. Um, in the third year we can weigh it to either side if we decide we want to do more computer science or we want to do more philosophy and there will only be very few core modules in the third year. And if we decide to do a fourth year, that can be either completely computer science or completely philosophy if we choose so. In the later years of the course, then, there's a lot of philosophy options. So I think there's about 30 options, possibly more than that, that all philosophers across the university can take. You don't study philosophy to just write down what other philosophers have said. In philosophy, you have to kind of learn how to argue, how to argue for a point. What I found as somebody with no experience of philosophy before is that, you, that the main thing to do is just to get stuck into the reading and being prepared to do that and to open up the books. And it does take time to read philosophy and you, it's not like reading a novel. You actually have to spend five minutes staring at one page sometimes to make sure things work out. Most of the work is interesting and we're doing the course because we're interested in those things that we're learning there. But it is a lot of work. While I've been here, my sort of weekly schedule has varied quite a lot. But on the whole, you can expect to have a couple of lectures each day. They'd be mostly computer science lectures, because in terms of philosophy, then you're going to spend more time reading and doing that independent self-study. We would expect our students to be working 35 or 40 hours a week on their course. Actually, if they're well organised, that still leaves plenty of time for other activities. In computer science, then, we have practicals which are two hours in front of a computer doing some programming. It's not just about the creation of the programs. You get a problem and you have to solve that problem and it's mostly the problem solving. It's just a lot of fun to do. Think what's going to happen in the 50 years of career that lie ahead of anyone who's applying for the degree now. The world is going to change hugely and one of the ways in which it's going to change is we're going to have a lot of autonomous robots out there. So we need to be thinking about how that's going to affect our thoughts about morality, free will, autonomy, for these things. Being at Oxford is great from a philosophy point of view because there's so many philosophers around studying such a variety of subjects and so you're not constrained just to scientists and you're not constrained just to people studying straight philosophy but you've got people to talk to who are studying all sorts of mixes of subjects. facilities in Oxford in general are really good. Um, it's a really relaxing atmosphere, especially the libraries. Of course the college libraries are really nice and um, we do enjoy working in our college library, but uh, as an Oxford student you have the possibility and to work in the Radcliffe camera and working on there is brilliant. You never have to buy a book, you can go find them and they'll buy things in if you need them and that's a wonderful facility to have. By studying at Oxford, you've got all the benefits that Oxford gives of close engagement with uh, 
academics looking after you, teaching you. So a lot of my teaching is one-to-one -one or two-to-one -to -one teaching. The tutorial system works best when there's things that you're, when you've gone into the um, tutorial very prepared and you think you know what you're talking about and then the tutor is able to say to you, actually have you thought about this? And then you have to pause and think and come back to your tutor with a different response and actually work out what's going on and delve deeper into it. They, they are there to explain what you didn't quite understand and that's just, it's a really personal learning experience. If the students have any problems, uh, they've got friends they know to discuss things with, uh, they've got an intimate teaching group, it makes it very, very easy to explore your ideas and have them stretched. Most of the people who apply here for computer science and philosophy won't have studied either computer science or philosophy at school. That doesn't actually matter. I had three interviews, one that was purely computer science, one that was purely philosophy and one at another college that was a combination of both. And so the philosophy interview in particular, I just came out of it really enjoying. Having been hesitant about philosophy, then I came out thinking, well if I got an offer from here, actually I'd really enjoy studying this. <laughs> We're looking for people who are flexible thinkers. We're looking for students who can respond well to the tutorial method, for whom the best way of learning is not going to be just reading things from a book passively, but actively engaging in discussion. For the philosophy interview, um, we were given a test first. It wasn't, it wasn't really a test, it was uh, to answer some logical questions so that um, the parts that I didn't get quite right in the test we could talk about in the interview. I would always ask people about philosophical interests they've got and I hope they would be able to show some enthusiasm for a, a few issues there. Uh, but I wouldn't be trying to catch them out, I'd be giving them a chance to talk about what they were interested in. But what would be most important would be how they responded to the sort of logical puzzles I gave them, how well they can think logically. Because basically if they can't do that they're not going to be able to cope. And if they can do that and they've got the enthusiasm and the interest, they'll be able to pick up everything else. The nice thing about the philosophy interview was that I didn't have any knowledge of the subject being talked about beforehand, but that was expected. And so we were able to just discuss something completely from scratch. It is an advantage if students have taken the trouble to find out a bit about what they're going to study. Um, come along to interview with really interesting things to discuss, maybe the odd passion that they have read up about and can talk to us about. Uh, we want to see a bit of that, that, that fire, that excitement and interest, um, as well as obviously the intellectual ability. When I found out I got into Oxford, that was such an amazing feeling. Is I was so happy. The graduates who come from this degree and go and work at the forefront of computer science and artificial intelligence and so, so on, in lots and lots of different areas, they're going to be faced with a rapidly changing world. They're going to have to rethink all their assumptions, or lots of them, many, many times during their careers. So that philosophical training, right at an early stage, teaching them from the start to get into the habit of thinking in a very flexible way, is going to make them amongst the most valuable contributors on those frontiers. The mathematical nature of the Oxford course is good because it means that I can apply my knowledge to other fields. So, for instance, I have a friend who'd like to go into economics or you could pursue more mathematical study and so there's great variety in that. But also, I think it gives me a grounding which is going to be, um, going to stay relevant further into the future. I would like to go into research about artificial intelligence. <laughs> I really like the idea of being involved in transport and like underground trains and how do you make them all line up and <laughs> that kind of management type thing. Computer scientists are needed right across the board. Go through to any area of fundamental research these days it's likely to be using computer scientists. Whether it's modelling the early universe, modelling the human heart, 
uh, searching for medicines in genetic data banks, um, modeling complex uh, behavior, lots and lots of areas where computer science scientists are needed. Stretch yourself as much as you can. Go well beyond the A-level, not in terms of content, but in terms of difficulty. Uh, stretch yourself with logical puzzles and mathematical problems wherever you can find them. And that will give you the best chance for getting in.